Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And in this one, I want to talk dexterity weapons. Ten of the best dex weapons you can get, you should get, in this game. If you guys are spec for dex and that is how you like to play, if you're looking for some of the best weapons or you're looking for things to go and pursue, maybe to try out something new, then this list should have you covered. If you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other dex weapons that you particularly like. Of course, I can't necessarily touch on every single one, but this is a solid list of 10 that uh, you definitely cannot go wrong with. So, in at number one, we have Bloodhound's Fang. One of my favorites because this is also a weapon you can get quite literally at the very beginning of the game. So if you do intend to spec into decks, this is something you can get very early and actually run with for, I mean, you could even run with it for the whole game if you wanted to, but this will definitely see you pretty far. It has a strength requirement of 18, a dex requirement of 17, and of course it has primary scaling in dex. This also comes with the awesome unique skill of Bloodhound's Finesse, where you basically slash upwards with the Bloodhound's Fang. You use the momentum of the strike to perform a backward somersault, and then if you input a strong attack following this, you'll basically dash back in for the Bloodhound step attack, which of course, if you have fought the Bloodhounds, you will know is a move that will quite often catch you. It is pretty lethal, this thing does some nice damage, it also looks pretty cool, and again that unique skill is super flashy in action. If you guys want to get this one, then quite simply you go to Limgrave, the nearest site of grace would be Argeel Lake South, and of course from there you want to work your way up to the forlorn Hound Evergal. Of course you go inside there, defeat the boss, which is of course a Bloodhound, and upon defeating it you will get this weapon. Following on from there, we then have the Dragon King's Cragblade. Of course, this one is on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. This is one you'll get towards the very end of the game. This is from the secret boss. I will not show you the boss. We have done a video on how to get this one if you guys have not seen that. But this is a very powerful heavy thrusting sword. It looks fantastic. I love the design of this thing. But it also has the incredible unique skill Thundercloud form, where you temporarily transform into a red Thundercloud which is just badass, and you fly through the air. Keep in mind, all whilst you're flying in that cloud, if you do collide with things, it will also deal damage. But you then plunge down with a lightning-infused blade, and of course you can hold to increase the range of the thunder cloud. So, this is very cool. It does, of course, have a dex requirement of 37 and a strength requirement of 18, but it, of course, primarily scales index. I feel like if you are spec that way, and of course you've gone as far as to defeat that boss, then you kind of need to run with this just because it is a symbol of your triumph and it's just a lot of fun to use. Of course, if you want to get this one, quite simply, defeat the boss and then you can go and get the remembrance from the round table hold and you can trade it for this weapon. Moving on from there, we then have the Godskin Peeler, a fantastic twin blade. Twin blades are really cool in this game, but the Godskin is a really nice pick, of course, because it has nice scaling index. Also in Arcane, this can have Ashes of War applied to it, so if you caught our video recently on the Godskin Peeler build, you will know this is very nice for bleed builds. Put on Seppuku onto this, run with two if you can get a hold of a second one or just a second twin blade, and you can do some disgusting damage. If you do power stance two of these, or at least two twin blades, the jump attack is very nice. This is a fantastic weapon to choose, a weapon to run with, and this has a dex requirement of 22 and a strength requirement of 17. If you want to get this one, you need to go over over to the Altus Plateau, go to the Windmill Village, work your way to the very top, there is a Godskin boss, defeat it, and the weapon is yours. Of course, it wouldn't be a dex weapon list without mentioning the Hand of Melania. Not only is this a good weapon, but also if you've gone through the pain to defeat that boss, you need to use this weapon just because it is like a trophy to say, I finally did it. it has a dex requirement of 48, a strength requirement of 16, of course B scaling in dex, so it is a dex focused weapon. Fantastic damage on this thing, and also you have the unique skill Waterfowl Dance, which I would be willing to bet is probably the move that has killed many of us many, many times over. You perform a series of one-footed leaps in the manner of the Waterfowl to unleash a swift yet graceful slashing combo, and if you then do repeated inputs, it allows for up to two follow-up attacks. So this is fantastic, of course a nice way to just like land a bunch of hits in a very short space of time and just kind of nice to be able to actually use the move that uh, destroyed us so much. Again, if you want to get this one, you will need to defeat Melania and then of course take her remembrance back to Roundtable Hold and trade for this weapon. Following off from there, we then have Scorpion Stinger, which of course is a Scarlet Rot weapon, but also a Dex Focus weapon, a requirement of 12 for Dex, 6 for Strength on this one, has decent scaling in Dex, of course daggers are quite nice if you want to uh, you know, lean more into say the parry play style, because daggers do get that crit bonus damage, but also if you want to lean into Scarlet Rot, because of course that is another potent affinity this time around, it is quite nice. I mentioned this one in our Scarlet Rot video the other day, but this is also a Dex weapon, and definitely one worth picking up. For this one you will of course need to have progressed through Rani's questline to get to the 
underground cities. You will then need to go and work your way over to the Lake of Rot, cross over to the Grand Cloister Site of Grace, and then simply follow the route whereby you just drop down to the lower platforms, run straight up the stairs into the room with the chest as opposed to taking the left, you open the chest and that is where you get the weapon. Now to mix these up a little bit, let's talk about whips. Whips are of course a fantastic weapon to use in this game. I feel like they don't get too much attention, but specifically the Urumi whip is a fantastic dex weapon because if you upgrade this one and you switch it over to Keen, it can actually get S tier dex scaling, making this very, very potent. It's also another weapon that allows you to put on your own Ash of War, so you can kind of use this and customize this to your heart's content. It has a dex requirement of 19, a strength requirement of 10. It is a really cool weapon to use. Honestly, using double whips is also another fantastic thing, something I've been having a lot of fun with. So definitely don't sleep on this one. And this one is actually pretty easy to get. You need to go over to Leonia. So of course you can get this one uh, relatively early in the game. You need to work your way up to the Carrier Manor and go to the Manor Lower Level Site of Grace. From there, you simply need to follow the route I'm taking, which just involves running straight forwards down the battlements. You go past the first tower, you go past the second one, then you take a left and just jump off onto the lower roof. And then following this path, you will then work your way down to a bunch of hands once you defeat them there is a dead body behind interacting with that collecting the item will give you the arumi whip now the next one brings us on to the katana section of this video there are a few katanas here because they are fantastic dex weapons i cannot do a dex list without mentioning some of these so all the remaining weapons are katanas spoilers first one of course is rivers of blood this is fantastic as of the most recent patch it is borderline broken to the point it will probably get nerfed soon but this thing of course dex requirement of 18 arcane 20 strength 12 primarily scaling in dex. This is a fantastic, unique katana, of course, with the unique weapon skill Corpse Piler, where it forms a blade of curved blood for repeated interweaving successive attacks, and you can follow up with an additional input for further successive attacks. This thing just shreds blood, and blood loss buildup is just lethal in this game, and using this one in action. Honestly, post-patch, it was this weapon that got me through the millennia fight. I'm not even ashamed to admit that. This thing is a beast. So if you haven't got it, definitely add it to your arsenal. Of course, if you do want to get it, you need to go to the Church of Repose up in the snowy region, the mountaintops of the Giants. You want to go over to here, and then when you approach the church, you'll be invaded. Simply kill the invader, and he will then drop not only his helmet, his mask, but also this sword. Of course, while talking about katanas, we have the Moonveil katana, which is one that I'm personally not using myself because I am not in spec, but... If you guys are, perhaps if you're leaning more into the Spellcaster builds, but you do want something else you can rely on for some melee damage, the Moonveil Katana is also a fantastic pick. Intellect requirement of 23, strength 12, dex 18, primary scaling in int, but followed with dex. So of course, it is a weapon that I still wanted to include in this list. Again, not one that I've been personally using, and I feel like if you are spec primarily for dex, it won't necessarily be your initial choice. However, again, if dex is perhaps your secondary stat alongside intellect, then you should not sleep on this weapon. For this one, you of course need to go over to the Gale Tunnel, work your way to the bottom, there is a boss, defeat the boss, and it will give you the katana. However, one katana I think is fantastic and you should definitely get is the Nagakiba. This is, uh, I mean, look, for a minute, let's just be honest, it's basically Sephiroth's blade. This thing is huge, has a dex requirement of 22, strength requirement of 18, primary scaling B in dex. If you do go and switch this over to Keen, you can of course get it up to A scaling in dex. And again, you know, this is a weapon that you can put your own Ash of War on, so you can use it with Seppuku in Blood Loss builds, other Ashes of War, whatever you want. This is a fantastic weapon and it's just huge. It looks ridiculous. Honestly, I wish I could get a second one of these because running around with two of these would be awesome. If you want to get this one, you need to follow the quest line to get Eleonora's Pole Blade. So if you guys have not done that, I will link the video down below because it's a little bit long to include in this video. But once you get to the end of that quest line and you get to the Second Church of America just before you get the Pole Blade, you will of course be given the Nagakiba from the NPC. And then finally to round it out, a weapon that you can get right at the beginning of the game again, I have to mention this in a dex weapon, that is simply the Uchi Katana, the most basic of katanas, but this thing is fantastic. Honestly, I used this thing, I used two of these through pretty much the whole game. I of course did switch to a few weapons here or there based on things that I picked up, but largely speaking, this thing, when upgraded, is potent. Of course, you can then switch it to a variety of different scalings based on, of course, how you uh, put the Ashes of War on this thing. I ran with this as a blood weapon for a long time. Of course, you can also just boost it up to like Keen. Even at one point in my game, I even made it a strength katana when I was running more strength focused builds. This thing is versatile. If you start the game as a samurai, you will have one. If you don't, of course, you can pick one up. But this thing has a dex requirement of 15, 11 in strength, and again, primarily scaling in dex. You can get that all the way up to A if you put it into Keen. So this is well worth it. So again, if you didn't start as a samurai, but you do still want one, you want to work your way up to the Death Touch Catacombs 
and quite simply work your way through, follow the route here, you don't need to get to the end, you're simply going to be going through, dropping down to the platform, running through the doorway, and you then come out to the other side where there is a skeleton, a dead body, hanging over the edge, and if you interact with that, that will give you the Uchi Katana. So, there you have it. There's a little rundown on 10 of the best dex weapons that you should definitely check out if you guys are spec for dex and you are looking for some weapons, that is a list of some you do not want to miss. Again, if you guys do have other ones you think are worth mentioning, perhaps should have been in this list, by all means let me know in the comments down below, let your fellow Tarnished know about them, and of course if you missed our recent videos, be sure to check out this one, but do keep it locked to the channel for plenty more Elden Ring.